It's Halloween weekend, and when you think of Halloween, you think of scary movies. And what could be more scary than the classic Psycho? That's the topic that Ray talked about with Joe Fortunato. He is our film expert. Let's listen in. Well, welcome to another edition of Film School with film study professor Joe Fortunato. And this week, with it being Halloween season, Joe's going to go down the road and take us back to the 1960s, what is still rated as one of the best scary horror movies of all time, a Hitchcock classic, when you talk about Psycho. And Joe, why don't I let you take it from there, my friend Joe Fortunato. Joe? Thanks, Ray, and welcome, everybody. And yes, today we're going to talk about Psycho from 1960, uh, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, written by Joseph Stefano, based on the book by Robert Block. This is the granddaddy of all modern horror films. And, uh, of course, it stars Anthony Perkins, Janet Leigh, Vera Miles, John Gavin. Uh, it had four Oscar nominations, but no wins. Uh, it was, and by the way, just as a brief aside, for those who don't know, Hitchcock has never won an Oscar. So uh, mm. that's kind of a, uh, a not-so-fun fact, I guess, for Hitchcock <laughs> or the Hitchcock estate. But uh, anyway, it was uh, ranked number one in the AFI 100 Thrills film series, and it was ranked number 14 as the greatest movie of all time by the AFI. Um, it's based on the novel, as I said, by Robert Block, and that novel was actually based on the crimes of Wisconsin murderer Ed Dean, uh, who was the inspiration for... Other films such as Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Silence of the Lambs. So the, the horror lineage here is, is, runs pretty deep. The budget on this film was very low. It was only $800,000 to make, and it earned $40 million. It was the highest grossing film of Hitchcock's career. And because Paramount Pictures didn't think that the movie was going to do very well, they actually agreed to let him take 60% of the movie's gross. So his personal earnings from the film were like $15 million, which is you know over $100 million in today's dollars. So Hitchcock did very well by this film, uh, not only creatively, of course, but uh, financially as well. The other kind of fun thing about Psycho from a historical standpoint is that before Psycho, movie theaters would just play movies all day, and people would pay their ticket, they would come in, and they could just sit there all day. They might come in in the middle of the movie uh, and stay and watch the end of it and then see the beginning or... Uh, you know, sometimes cartoons and stuff like that. But Hitchcock uh, made all of the movie theaters that were showing Psycho sign a contract that they wouldn't let anyone in uh, until the start of the film, and they wouldn't let anyone in after the film started because he wanted to preserve the, the suspense and the ending. So if they were late, they couldn't come in. And this started formalizing the whole process of sort of mandatory seating times and uh, show times that we see today. So uh, we can thank 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 psycho for that as well joe um, let, let me oh, ask, go ahead sir I, I'm, I'm sorry i thought you were done there. I, I was going to ask you i i like the movie psycho you look at it differently being a film study professor mm -hmm. what in your mind makes this movie stand out like you said number one on the thrill charts and i've been reading some charts how this is still through all the years of horror movies in the top five of almost everyone's list what made this thing stand out in your viewpoint well, I think it all comes down to Hitchcock. I mean, Hitchcock, uh, you know, has the name Master of Suspense, and he certainly is. And it's his influence on the quality of the film that really elevates it. Uh, man, you know, I'm not going to say anything about bad about the acting or the story or anything, but I think it's Hitchcock's direction that really uh, makes it stand out. And we can look no further, really, <laughs> than the famous shower scene. Um, and, and Hitchcock... Uh, used uh, 78 pieces of film in 45 seconds. That's incredible when you think about it. About 50 cuts to make that shower scene. Um, some some fun facts. I think a lot of people already know this, but they don't. <clears throat> One of the reasons he shot it in black and white is because uh, he thought the blood would be too gruesome in the shower scene. Mm. So when in black and white, they use chocolate Bosco syrup uh, to photograph as the blood. So it, it, it shoots uh, as blood in black and white, and uh, that's kind of a, a, a famous fun fact. The sound that the knife makes while uh, penetrating the, the flesh of, of uh, Janet Lee is actually the sound stabbing a cassava melon. So uh, <laughs> some fun behind-the-scenes facts there as well. One other uh, thing that uh, 
Alfred Hitchcock it contributed uh, to the success of the film and kind of answers your question of you know, why it's so great. Is Bernard Herrmann's score. Um, Hitchcock said, you know, 33% of the film uh, success is due to the music. In fact, uh, he liked it so much that he doubled the composer's salary once it was finished. And it's entirely string instruments. It's pretty famous. In fact, that music <clears throat> is ranked number four on AFI's 100 Years of Film Scores. You know, I always love to use the AFI list because they're uh, so iconic. Uh, Anthony Perkins was, we talk about casting a lot. Anthony Perkins was the first choice for Norman Bates, so we don't go too far there. Um, there were people considered for the role of Marion, Eva Marie Saint, Lee Remick, Angie Dickinson, Shirley Jones, um, some old time, uh, names that are familiar to, familiar to, uh, older, older, uh, listeners. Um, for the, for the other roles of Sam Loomis, uh, there was, uh, um, Brian Keith, Cliff Robertson, Rod Taylor, um, Ted Knight, actually, mm. uh, the great Ted Baxter <laughs> from uh, uh, Mary Tyler Moore, makes an appearance in this film as the, one of the guards in the uh, uh, in the final scene that's opening Norman's cell. So <clears throat> next time you watch, look for, for Ted Knight there. And, and Anthony Perkins and Janet Leigh actually have gone on record as saying they didn't really mind being stereotyped forever, and they were. Uh, it, it did affect their careers somewhat negatively because they were stereotyped by the film. But they said that they'd rather be stereotyped in a great classic film than not remembered at all, which I think is a pretty healthy way of looking at it. Well, one of the classics for sure. It is Horror Movie Weekend, so Joe dug it out with the movie Psycho this week as we went to film school with film study professor Joe Fortunato. Joe, as always, thanks for the time and the visit. Always appreciated. Thanks, Ray. Happy Halloween, everybody. We'll see you next time.